Thank you, Dan. Good morning. I want to start with a little story about Akiva, who was a rabbi. Now, he lived near Capernaum, near where Jesus did. He went into the the little town for supplies. So he left his cottage, walked the little path into town, being somewhat absent-minded, kind of lost track of time, and all of a sudden he realized he needed to get back home. So he's on the trail, walking back home, and suddenly a voice rang out. Who are you? Why are you here? Well, he stopped. He thought, am I hearing things? Where did that come from? And he continued on. And again, the voice came out. Who are you? And why are you here? What kind of roused him to his senses, and he realized, looking through the darkness now, that he was right in front of the Roman garrison. In his absent-mindedness, he had taken a wrong path. He was not headed back to his cottage. He was headed right in front of the Roman garrison, and the voice had come from a young sentry who was keeping guard there. Well, being a rabbi, he answered a question with a question. Rather than answering the question that had been asked of him, he says, young man, how much do they pay you? to stand there and do your job. Ask that question of those who approach. The young man then, obviously seeing that this was not an intruder, this was a rabbi, he said, sir, they pay me four drachmas a week. Akiva the rabbi said, I will double your salary if you come with me, stand in front of my cottage, and every morning as I come out for my day, ask me those two questions. Who are you and why are you here? Well, that's my question for you this morning. Sometimes we hear people talk about, well, at least I'm making a living. But then they go on and describe work that is very boring, stressful, non-fulfilling. Does that sound like making a living? It really sounds more like making a dying. I mean, I hate to use harsh terms, but it really is. That is not making a living. Making a living implies that what you do is where you come alive, where everything that God has gifted you with comes alive and is seen at its very best. It's no surprise that we often choose to dismiss work's importance by reducing it to a necessary evil because we need to provide a paycheck. We need to be responsible providers. So it's just a matter of getting out there and doing that. But as long as we view work as just something to create a paycheck, we miss connecting with our talents and gifts, and often in a very profound way. We are rapidly approaching the time when only 50% of the American workforce will be employees. Now hear me well on that. I did not say we're going to have 50% unemployment. That's not going to happen. Unemployment is dropping as we speak. But only 50% of the workforce will be employees. That's going to challenge a lot of the models that a lot of us grew up being used to. Theologian John Donne talked about the Spanish sailors who were exploring new lands. Now they would leave not knowing what was out there in the water, but confident that if they went far enough, they were going to discover new lands. So they had been at sea for several months, and sailors know some critical things. One is you better not run low on fresh water, because you have to have water above all other supplies. They were running low. They also knew that if you drink salt water, it'll kill you. They came right at the mouth of the Amazon River, South America. If you know your geography, you know that's a very, very large river. It comprises 20% of the Earth's surface, fresh water. It's 25 miles wide inland at points during the rainy season, and where it opens into the ocean, it's over 220 miles wide. It dumps 800 trillion gallons of fresh water into the ocean every day. However, the sailors in coming across, the changes were slow and subtle. It wasn't like here's salt water, here's fresh water. It was slow and subtle. They didn't even really understand that they had transitioned into fresh water. They thought it was just a continuation of the ocean because it was so big. And we're told that while these sailors were sitting on top of the largest body of fresh water in the world, many of those sailors died of thirst. Now that's a pretty powerful metaphor for how I see the workplace today. I hear a lot of people say, you know, it's over, boom, we're in a recession, I can't find anything, nobody's hiring. So I'm asking you, are we sitting on top of salt water where there are no opportunities? Or are we, in fact, sitting on top of the greatest opportunities the world has ever given us?